Hey guys, welcome back to The Dozens. With all the craziness that actually happens at 1400 Pennsylvania Avenue, it's crazy to think that there's a fictional world where things actually get wackier. Cue Tyler Perry's The Oval. The Oval is an outrageous drama about a new first family and all the chaos they bring to the White House. From dangerous cults to murders and cover-ups to horribly spoiled and entitled children, Tyler Perry clearly had a lot on his mind when he wrote this one, and now we have questions. So here's our list of the 12 questions we need answered in The Oval Season 2. If you haven't seen the show and are sensitive to spoilers, then be forewarned, spoilers ahead. If not, grab some popcorn because this one is a doozy. But before we get started, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to The Dozens for more great videos. Number 12. Will the President and the First Lady be able to maintain their facade? One of the shockers at the top of the first season was just how much the President and the First Lady hate each other. From what they described, the love between them never got a chance to really develop. The First Lady Veronica got pregnant in college with President Hunter Quinn's baby. Her parents, who already poured so much into her, didn't want all of that work to be in vain. So they molded Hunter into a political powerhouse and got him all the way to the White House. So it seemed instead of love, they developed a partnership that apparently gave way to some serious vitriol. But the way they turn it on and off is a thing of magic. No one outside of their family knows just how much their perfect marriage is a facade. But with moving into the White House with all that security, staff, and assistance everywhere, it's becoming harder and harder to hold. Will they crack this season? Will the world finally see this perfect couple for who they really are? Number 11. Is that really the end for Lindsay Yuma and Max Carter? Not only does the president not respect his wife, he doesn't respect their marriage either. When the president sneaks his mistress into the White House, he leaves her in his bedroom while he goes to use the restroom. When he returns, she is beheaded. His newest Secret Service agent, Kyle Flint, and his chief of staff, Donald Winthrop, help him to cover it up. Unfortunately, there were a few loose ends that other Secret Service agents, Lindsay Yuma and Max Carter, picked up on. They tugged a little too hard and ended up dead by the hands of Agent Flint, who not only pinned the entire murder on them, he enjoyed every minute of it. This whole scenario wrapped up a little too clean. It's hard to believe that that's the end of it. Do Yuma or Carter have family that could investigate? Were there truly no witnesses? We shall see next season. Number 10. Will Barry ever get his daughter back? One of the craziest scenarios we've seen in a while is regarding Barry and his ex. Barry is the son of the president's butler. His ex, Ruth, is a former drug addict slash prostitute who has now joined a dangerous cult to find relief from the pain her life was causing her. Barry spent a lot of his time and energy building a life for his daughter and his new girlfriend away from Ruth. So when Ruth comes begging to see her daughter in the first episode, he pushes her away. His mother, on the other hand, invites Ruth to see her daughter without Barry's knowledge. During that encounter, Ruth kidnaps her daughter at gunpoint and takes her off to join the cult. Barry doesn't give up looking for her until the cult fakes Ruth's death and blames it on Barry to kind of throw everyone off their set. Barry ends up distracted by that and some other things going on in his love life. In season two, does he get back on the hunt for his daughter? Does he eventually find her? Fun fact number one, Ruth's twin sister is actually the president's mistress who mysteriously dies while he's in the bathroom. Fun fact number two, you can find out more about Ruth and her time at the cult in this show spinoff, Ruthless. Number 9. Who are the First Lady's parents? Victoria Franklin, the First Lady, is strong and poised. She's also mean, nasty, and terrifies her staff. So when a woman like that cowers at the sight of her mother and winces at the thought of her father, you know something's up. They were powerful enough to put Hunter in the White House and build up many of the staff around him. When the First Lady's mother shows up out of the blue because she caught wind of the chaos her family brought to the White House, everyone from the President to the Chief of Staff stopped in their tracks. 
Just who are these people? The only ones that don't seem to know are the first children, Gail and Jason. Their bad behavior earned them a vacation with their grandparents that their mother assured them would not be pleasant. Something tells us that when they return, they'll know just who their grandparents really are, and hopefully, so will we. Number eight, will Gail get her act together? Gail Franklin is the first daughter of the United States. In the first episode, she accuses Barry of rape. By the end of the first season, she had snuck out to meet her drug dealer boyfriend who ultimately gets killed because of her. She almost gets a maid fired, she dies out of a moving car, and attempts emancipation. Every time you almost feel bad for her, she disrespects her staff and then you don't. Believe it or not, she's not even the worst person in her family. There is some hope for her though. Will she return a changed person after spending time with her grandparents? Let's hope so. Number seven, will Richard finally forgive Nancy? Richard is the president's butler and Nancy is his wife. Together, they are a very respected couple in the community. Their love seemed traditional and strong, which is why it was a painful shock to Richard that when he was younger and deployed in the military, Nancy strayed, got pregnant, and had a baby. That baby was then raised by her sister, who clearly only had that child in her presence for the money that Nancy was giving her. She didn't even try to raise him. Nancy tried her best to guide him from a distance without giving up her secret. However, that wasn't enough. He grew up to be a drug dealer named Picky, the same one who was dating the president's daughter and was ultimately killed because of it. Richard discovers the truth after pressing Nancy as to why she was taking Picky's death so hard. Richard did not receive the news well and immediately wanted Nancy gone. Will they be able to pick up the pieces in season two? Number six, the future of the press secretary position. The president wasted no time finding a replacement after his mistress was murdered. The president met Ellie as Diane, the press secretary's assistant, and instantly starts flirting. At first, she seemed meek and innocent and spurns his advances. Diane notices the interest the president has taken in her and attempts to connect the dots when she finds his dead mistress's underwear in the Oval Office. Diane recklessly accuses Ellie of sleeping with the president. Ellie tells the president he then fires Diane and replaces her with Ellie. Diane does not take that lying down. In her last press meeting, she tells the world about the president's fornicating ways, leaving Ellie a huge mess to clean up. Ellie surprises everyone and tells the press that Diane is on meds and handles the fallout professionally. Is this the last we'll see of Diane? Was that press conference a fluke or can Ellie really hold her own? Number five, Barry, Kareem, and Sharon. Not only did Barry have to deal with his daughter being kidnapped, he had to deal with his girlfriend cheating on him with her boss, Kareem. Sharon was not feeling the energy coming from Barry in their relationship and was constantly tempted by Kareem, telling her how she deserved better and how he was it. When Barry caught the two in the act, he drove his truck through the pharmacy owned by Kareem. Sharon convinces Kareem to not press charges by continuing to flirt with him and making him think that there was a future. Sharon eventually goes back to Barry and they try to make it work. Will Barry and Sharon work out? Will Kareem give up pursuing Sharon? Will Sharon just get another job and leave all the drama behind? We are excited to see this story pick up season two. Number four, will Priscilla and Sam fix their marriage or will he cheat with the first lady? Priscilla and Sam are a handsome young couple. Sam is the head of the secret service in the White House and Priscilla oversees the staff. They have long days and apparently dry nights, which is starting to cause Sam to get a little restless. His restlessness is evident to the first lady who is constantly propositioning him for less than wholesome encounters. So far, he's denying her advances. However, as they grow closer and his wife continues to ignore that part of their marriage, he may not be able to hold out much longer. In season two, which direction will their marriage go? Number three, what's going on with Lily, Flint, and Donald? 
Lily is an up-and-coming fashion designer who designed the First Lady's inauguration gown, garnering her lots of buzz. She's married to Donald, the president's chief of staff. Donald has been having an affair with Kyle Flint from the Secret Service. Donald tries to break it off, but Kyle is a bit off his rocker and forces his way back in. He also paid his friend to seduce Lily to try and drive a wedge between her and Donald. That plan worked and backfired all at the same time. His friend ends up falling for Lily and tells her everything. Lily then confronts Donald and threatens to leave him. Fearful of what impact his personal life going public will have on his career, both Kyle and the First Lady's mother threatens him to either get her in line or she dies. Where will this go from here in season two? Number two, who killed the president's mistress? The president goes to the bathroom and returns to his bed. Upon his return, he discovered his mistress beheaded. Who did it and why? The show gave no clues as to why this happened. Hopefully we get some answers in season two. But before we hop into our number one pick, jump down to the comments and let us know what you would like for us to cover in our next video. And while you're down there, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay up to date on our latest videos. Number one, will Jason answer for killing Jean? To answer your question, no, there isn't anyone in the first family that's actually palatable. Jason is the quietest and most reprehensible at the same time. The show is pretty ambiguous about Jason's history, but it's pretty clear he's a pervert. Throughout the show, he's caught making various women feel uncomfortable. From randomly appearing naked in front of strangers to touching himself in restaurants, he clearly has issues. So when he becomes fixated on a young maid, it becomes clear that it wasn't going to end well. Throughout the season, it's obvious that Jean, the young maid, is uncomfortable being around Jason. However, somehow, she ends up in his room, alone with him, packing his luggage for his vacation with his grandparents. He snaps, rapes her, and then kills her. He hides her body under his bed and then leaves for vacation like nothing happened. Her body was later found by another maid. Since Jason is the president's son, it's likely that every effort will be made to protect this family's image. However, G needs to get justice. We hope that we see Jason held accountable and punished for this heinous crime in season two. And there you have it, the 12 questions we need answered in The Oval season two. Do you agree with our picks? Is there something we missed? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications on our latest videos.